Hey Nathan here, welcome to another C++ tutorial. And in this tutorial, we are going to create our first program. All right, so last video, I discussed the Visual Studio interface in general. I discussed things that you will see in every project and every tutorial that we do. And as we progress through the series, we'll obviously discuss the other stuff as well. But for now, that stuff that I mentioned in the previous video will pretty much be what you see in every project and every video that I release. Also in the previous video, I built a very basic 132 console application. We'll be changing that from this point on. So let's go ahead and go to new project and make sure we have Visual C++ selected. So in the last video, I did a 132 console application. From this point on, we'll be doing an empty project here. Make sure Visual C++ is selected and choose empty project. Set the location you want to save the file, save the project, and let's name it tutorial one. I'm going to click OK, and that will create an empty project. So with an empty project, we need to manually add files into it. So for the next several tutorials, we're only going to have one file, and that's in the source files folder. So let's right click the source files folder, and let's select add new item. It's going to be a C++ file. I'm going to change the name to main. Main. So we have one file in our project, main.cpp. Right now it is blank. Okay. In terms of programs, a program needs something that will start. You know, it needs an entry point. So it's a good idea to have an entry point in the very basic critical information in this main.cpp file. I will be using this main.cpp file for other things. But if you're building your own massive project, it's a good idea to just have the main.cpp have that entry point and the most critical stuff needed for that entry point. Now, there are a couple things you need to do for every program you make. In terms of console applications, we'll need to include a header file, and we'll get into what a header file is in a later tutorial. But in terms of console applications, we'll need to include a header file that will allow us to display information and receive information from the user. In order to include a header file, we have a pound include up at the very top, less than IO stream greater than. That is the input output stream. That will allow us to display information to the user and get information from the user, as well with as a couple of other things that we'll we will not get into. Okay, as I mentioned, every program needs an entry point. So let's create that entry point right now. Type in int int space main, open and closing parentheses, open and closing the curly brackets here, just like that. And then inside the brackets, let's return zero. All right, so this is the entry point for our program. And we'll get into detail on what this int means and what this return means later on. But for now, just this basically says it is a successful, you know, our program was successful. Later on, we'll discuss what these actually mean. Okay. So, I put two lines before the return zero, 
so there's a nice gap between what we're writing here and return zero. Okay, there is one more thing we need to do before we progress further. So everything in terms of console applications, you must include IO stream if you want to provide basic input and output. You know, a console application would be boring if you did not provide input from the user or display information to the user. So pretty much every console application you make will need to have include IO stream. Now to make your coding smaller and look easier to read, we'll need to do one more thing and that's provide using namespace STD. That will say we are using the namespace standard. We are using the standard namespace in our project. Now, IOStream, the input output stream, allows us to display information to the user. That's what we'll be doing in this video here. To display information to the user, IOStream provides a see out capability. So the letter C out, council output. C out and then put a space after that less than less than another space and the string we want to display so double quotes hello world explanation point and then quote again and then a semicolon here okay so that's gonna display hello world to our window. So now if we go ahead and start debugging here, you see that we had a black window open and then close right away. That's because after it prints this to the screen, it's saying it's a su successful program. Okay, so there's a couple things that you can do to kind of fix this. You can either launch the program from a command line, or we can add a line between C out and a return that will request input from the user. That's the way I'm going to kind of fix this situation. Just like with IOStream, just like providing the output, it provides us to receive input as well. C out lets us provide output. You can imagine what we can use to provide input. Sin, C I N, and then we're going to put a dot here and we're going to say get. We're going to get something from the user. So that way it will wait until we press something and then it will close the program. All right, so let's go ahead and start debugging. There we go. So now we display hello world and now it's waiting for input. Once we provide any input, enter, um, then the program quits. If you want to say that to the user, you know, we can provide another C out. Press enter to quit. So we can display something else to the user. And then if we go and start debugging, hello world, press enter to quit. However, look at that string, hello world, exclamation point, press enter to quit. What if we want press enter to quit in its own line? Well, C out allows us to provide that option by before the semicolon, we can provide another two less than end L. We can end the line by using end L. Then if we start debugging again, press enter to quit is on its own line.
All right, so that was it for this video. Before I end this, I want to discuss what these things are here. After the NL, after the quote here, after the dot get open and close in parentheses, after return zero, we have semicolons after all these lines here. And after the STD, we have a semicolon there as well. We need to have a semicolon after statements for the compiler to distinguish between one sentence and another. The reason it's not in here is because the uh, pound include and other things as well that we'll get into later are preprocessor declarations, preprocessor include. These are preprocessor lines here. These are not noticeable by the compiler. The statements are, however, so a statement needs to have a semicolon at the end for things to work fine. If you do not provide that, and then you try to build, it'll have issues. Syntax error missing semicolon before identifier C out. So I just wanted to mention what these semicolons are used for. They're to say this is the statement, and then that's it. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I uh, I hope you enjoy the series. Now, this series, since it's a beginner series, I will not be releasing it to premium members first. I will just release it straight to the public. So stay tuned for the next tutorial where we will discuss variables.